you, uh, thank you, Cameron. And thanks for the invitation to talk to everybody today. Um, I'd like to start with a bit of audience participation, if I can. Um, I'd like you to raise your hand if you don't have one of these or one of these, i.e. a mobile telephone. Just doing a quick straw check of the room. There's one. Amazing, amazing. Well, what I'm going to talk about today is um, M Health or mobile health in resource limited settings in the context of how we're using that at Omega Diagnostics to implement a point of care diagnostic test for um, semi quantitative measurement of CD4 cells in, in HIV. I don't profess to say that HIV is a neglected tropical disease, so I'm sorry to Cameron that we're not um, fully uh, on trend. Um, but we're drawing a parallel, really, with, with other things that we've got planned at Omega Diagnostics because we've got neglected tropical diseases and HIV co-infections very firmly on our radar um, to implement true points of care diagnostics um, in sub-Saharan Africa. So just to throw some statistics at you, um, WHO report that was released last year with some data from the uh, International Telecommunications Union has uh, stated that there were now over 5 billion wireless cellular tran uh, subscriptions worldwide, and over 70% of those were in middle to low income countries. Um, at the end of 2014, the World Bank released figures that there are currently 650 million mobile telephone handsets um, across sub-Saharan Africa. And that figure is predicted to rise by 20-fold uh, by 2020. So the amount of mobile and cellular usage out there is just phenomenal. And it's in that context that I want to talk to you today. So just to outline the agenda, um, going to give you a bit of background on Omega Diagnostics, um, the problem we're trying to address in HIV AIDS um, antiretroviral initiation and staging. Uh, the solution that we've come up with, a combination of a point of care diagnostic test and uh, mHEL technology, and the benefits of our test, basically. So Omega Diagnostics was founded in 1987. Um, got to be on my best behavior because our founder and chief executive is sat just over the other side of the room. <clears throat> and what are we involved in? So we um, manufacture and provide a wide range of specialist products, primarily in in vitro diagnostics in three segments. So allergy and autoimmune, food intolerance, and infectious disease. And it's the infectious disease part of our business where we have the most experience and it's the, the legacy products that we're most um, known for. Um, we manufacture around 50 million syphilis tests every year. We, we're one of the leading companies worldwide uh, to produce those kind of tests. And our mission is to improve human health and well-being through innovative diagnostic tests and global partnerships. Um, approximately 90% of our business is outside of the UK. We only do 10% of our business inside the UK. And many, many parts of our customers, customer base, the predominant amount of what we do is in resource poor countries. And this is an interesting slide because uh, the building in the background is where we foresee the Visitec CD4 test being implemented. So in a facility that might not have any power, that might not have any running water, um, and the skill level of the healthcare workers is, is, is nothing to be compared to a, a sophisticated laboratory or a hospital laboratory. So this is just a represent representation of where our presence is. Um, so we've got a global distribution network in over 100 countries. We've got a direct presence in the UK. We're based in Alva in Scotland, still part of the United Kingdom for the foreseeable future. Um, we've also got a facility in Cambridge in the UK. We've got a facility in Rhinebeck, Germany, um, and in Cape Town in South Africa. So I mentioned in the previous slide that one of our 
key strategies in, in is partnerships. Um, so not only do we have the exp experience of manufacturing and exporting IVD diagnostics ourselves and the regulatory processes that go with that, our Visitex CD4 test was developed in partnership with the Burnett Institute in Melbourne, Australia, uh, with funding provided by the Gates Foundation. Um, leaders on that project were Mary Garcia, Suzanne Crow, and David Anderson, some of the most kind of well-known names in the HIV AIDS research world. And the Burnett Institute have actually been working on this test for six years. They tech transferred the, the, the test to us um, 2000, early 2014. Not commercially available yet. We hope to go to external trials in India and in Kenya in August and September later this year. And the data from those trials will be used for ERPD and um, pre-qualification application with um, the Global Fund and WHO. So one of the innovative things about our test is that we've developed um, an Android smartphone app, app for use on a Samsung platform for reading, interpretation and reporting of the Visitex CD4 um, test device. We have a pipeline of other products that we're, that we're looking at developing, which will also be mHealth orientated. So we envisage sometime in the future, hopefully it's the near future, where we have different tests in point of care format and a smartphone device that can recognize what test is being used, read that test, and then do all the neat tricks that I'll go on to explain in a couple of minutes. <coughs> So, to outline the problem that we face in um, HIV AIDS, if we look at the guidelines for people who are eligible for treatment with antiretroviral drug therapies but are currently not receiving it, when the WHO HIV treatment guidelines changed in 2013, um, that had a consequence of dragging 28.6 million people worldwide into um, the category of eligible for treatment but not accessible to treatment. Um, and the main reason being is that those people do not have access um, to testing, to diagnostic testing capabilities, and this is where we hope our test will help. Because if you look at the primary care and district hospital pictures there, that's where the 66% of those people who cannot have access to treatment would normally get tested. The way it happens at the moment is a blood sample is sent away for CD4 testing at a regional laboratory or a, a national laboratory. <coughs> there may be a one to two week delay in getting the result back to the patient, but in that time, the patient may never be seen again at those facilities and they're um, what we call lost to follow up. So the beauty of our test is that you will get an instantaneous result the same day and based on the result, they can go straight on to therapy and treatment, receive the counseling and support that they need and the decision will be, make, will be made very, very quickly. And we hope that our test can be used and utilised and, and contribute to the very ambitious Millennium Development Goals targets that were set by UNAIDS for 90% of HIV sufferers to be tested, virally suppressed and on antiretroviral treatment by the year 2020. So it's a huge amount of work to do, but we believe that our test, which can be utilised in these very remote areas with lack of access to any kind of um, what we'd call developed world facilities that that can really kind of contribute in a positive way. So our solution is a point of care test that can be used with a finger prick uh, sample of blood and um, I don't have Joseph's assured uh, criteria slide, I wish I'd put it up there. But uh, we believe this to be um, one of the world's first true points of care tests in terms of the assured criteria. Um, affordability, um, we see this test um, being available at around five US dollars per test. 
and that was the cost per test that was set by the original target product profile and when the call went out from um, the Gates Foundation. Um, sensitivity and specificity, um, we hope to have that data available after the external trials middle of this year and that will go forward to regulate appropriate regulatory appro approvals. Um, user friendly, um, we see this test being implemented and carried out by healthcare workers um, in these remote settings um, with very limited um, training um, that, that they will, very limited skills that they will need to acquire to run the test. Um, it's portable, it doesn't need any kind of cold chain storage or cold chain uh, logistics to transport it internationally. Um, it's disposable, um, so it, it is a true point of care uh, a test as laid out by the WHO in the assured criteria. So what does it give you? If you can see on the small lateral flow device there, you have a control line which has to be present in order to take the results of the test forward. You have a, a test line which is the patient sample results and you have a reference line which has got 350 on there. You remember that I said that the WHO changed the guidelines from 350 to 500, so we're rapidly working to bring out a 500 um, CD4 T-cell test, um, but it's a semi-quantitative test, so if your test line is of greater intensity to your reference line, then your CD4 cell count is above 350, um, and likewise, it's, if it's of lesser intensity, then it, it is below. Um, so it's a 40 minute incubation time from the first application of the sample through to reading the results. And then you get an instant decision. There are three ways that the test can be um, read and interpreted. So the test has been designed by the Burnett Institute in Australia to be read by eye. Um, but we really see a place for a mobile telephone application to be used and we've developed one with a partner that we have up in Edinburgh um, which automatically reads and interprets the test um, and then a neat piece of software which we've um, developed in collaboration with a company called Greenmash which I think you'll hear about in the next talk has some bespoke reporting um, functionality that we've incorporated with the mobile phone application and this can be used to upload the data in real time to Ministry of Health databases or similar national databases. Um, it can be used to map where the testing is taking place um, and consequently where the implementation of um, drug treatment is taking place um, and some really kind of bespoke um, functionality that's, that's very, very impressive. We will also have, in those um, scenarios where we need it, a benchtop reader, um, perhaps at, um, at third or fourth level uh, healthcare facilities where you do have a laboratory or you do have the necessity to um, have a, a hard copy result of the, uh, of the test. So in actually running the test, there we see the um, test results, which would be read by the smartphone application. <coughs> Immediate synchronization of the results, uploading of the results with Ministry of Health databases. The data would be stored securely and confidentially, and then an instant decision on treat or no treat can be taken. So you really kind of eliminate that delay um, of getting the results to the patient um, and you also don't run the risk of losing them to follow up. So just some words about the key benefits that we believe the test will deliver. It uses a finger prick sample um, and based on our experiences so far with some trials we've carried out in Kenya, this can be a real, um, a real inhibitor 
to getting people on board with using the test. People don't like uh, Venus samples from, from what we've observed. So we see that as a key uh, advantage. It's instrument free, it's true point of care uh, for all those reasons that I've, uh, that I've outlined. Um, it's time saving, you can make quick decisions. Um, you can make quick decisions for the benefit of the patient and you can improve um, you know, communications with the patient and, and, and help them and support them at the time that you get the results. It's affordable and, and low cost. Um, we have a consortium of um, different uh, stakeholders that we're going to use in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, it's a mobile health uh, development association. So we are the diagnostic test provider. Samsung will be providing the handsets. Um, there's a company which will provide the airtime. There's a company which will provide the SIM cards. So this consortium will arrange the implementation of these um, mobile handsets to these communities and help them implement the diagnostic programs. And the other key advantage which I've already touched upon, touched upon is that it is a smartphone, smartphone enabled and it brings across all that neat functionality um, that I've already outlined. Thank you.